Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the fourth and final part of our series, Best Quantitative Research Practices. So the topic for this final presentation is hosting reading groups. In the previous three videos, I looked at the research process, writing and publishing, as well as recommended tools. So if you are interested in those topics, please do check out our YouTube channel. So this presentation is divided up as follows. I'll discuss hosting a reading group, running a successful reading group, and then finally, the key ingredient for success. And I will end the video uh, with my conclusion and references. So let's start with the idea of hosting a reading group, especially if you haven't done this before and it is something new. Uh, so this typically takes place about once a week, depending on the size of your group. Uh, if your group is very small, you could look at maybe meeting every uh, second week, for example. And the idea behind the, uh, the idea behind hosting a reading group and why you want to do it is it's an excellent way to keep up to date with the latest developments uh, in your field. So when you are doing research, you're focusing on some very key aspects uh, within your uh, research field. And it is possible that you miss out on some of the newer developments happening in closer, closely related areas. Uh, the idea of a reading group then is to uh, have every week someone from your group present a research paper um, on a topic that they're interested, for example, or something that has been agreed upon uh, by the group. And this is just a great way for you to see what is happening in um, other areas of your field and uh, to learn at the same time. So this can be held at a venue, but it's more often today held online through Zoom meetings. Uh, and this is particularly great uh, if you have people from other countries joining in as well. Um, of course, one would have to keep in mind uh, things such as time zones when setting updates for the meetings. So uh, a, an article that I can highly recommend is how to lead a technical reading group uh, by Kathy Wu, which will be in the references at the very end of this video, as well as in the description um, of the video. And her article gives some excellent tips and advice for successfully running a reading group. Because the problem is uh, reading groups can lose steam after a while, people stop uh, attending the groups, and you want to maintain interest. So this leads on to a successful reading group, uh, keeping interest, how to structure it well, um, and how to choose material, for example, which is the first point, uh, finding appropriate material. So this could depend, of course, on the topics that interest your group. It could be theoretical or applied directions. Um, a good idea here to start getting people engaged is to ask them, uh, what kind of topics should we cover in this reading group? Um, everyone will certainly have an opinion on uh, things that they would like to see discussed. Uh, secondly, when setting up the reading group, aim for a reasonable amount of time. Uh, a, reasonable, a reasonable amount of time is about one to one and a half hours. Uh, if you do something too short, it could be too difficult to cover many interesting topics or if the topics are very complicated. Uh, being able to get a good, good grasp on them in a short time, but also having it too long and uh, could lead to people um, uh, being bored or uh, end up leaving the group uh, because it just consumes too much of their time. Uh, avoid also covering too little information or too much information within a session. It should just be a reasonable amount that people can digest, think about, and uh, ask questions if they need to. The third point is to choose a diverse range of topics within your field. Don't be too specialized in the topics. If you pick too niche of a topic, you know, that kind of defeats the purpose to some extent of uh, hope of uh, running a reading group. You want to learn uh, things outside of your um, area of expertise. You want to see what other people are doing. Maybe it interests you enough, of course, that it could become a future research topic. So be diverse in your range of topics. 
Um, then in terms of uh, maintaining interest within your group, uh, encourage discussion. It should be a very relaxed format. Uh, get people involved um, when someone is presenting some aspect of a paper that they've been reading. Um, if there's something you or someone else doesn't understand, you know, there should be room to discuss it and to be able to ask questions. Um, allow people also to get involved in setting things up. So um, this also goes on to the fifth point where you should delegate responsibility to people. Um, so for example, you can have a particular member tasked with advertising each week's topic to the reading group. Um, so the, this could be in an email format where the speaker's name is mentioned, a description of their topic is given, uh, as well as links to the paper or papers that they will be presenting. So this is a great way of getting people involved. It keeps interest within the group. Uh, then finally, uh, in terms of times, uh, I would recommend doing a reading group on a Friday if it's possible. Uh, Fridays, people tend to uh, be a bit more relaxed than the rest of the week as they're preparing to go into the weekend. So a Friday afternoon uh, is a great time to do a reading group. But if it is very difficult, uh, another great idea is a lunch and learn session. So as the name implies, it's done during your lunch time. Someone will present a paper um, and it will be a relaxed format where people can discuss things and um, learn. Um, so that's another option to consider. However, uh, let me mention what is mentioned in Wu's article as the key ingredient for maintaining success uh, in terms of a reading group. Um, so she recommends the following. At the beginning of each meeting, get each person to ask two questions. So these questions will then form an outline for the discussion um, as the meeting goes on. The reason for this is that all participants now have a stake in the discussion. They, of course, want to see their questions answered, and it also encourages them to take part in discussions um, of other people's questions. Um, so do keep this in mind. Uh, it is a great way to force engagement and keep interest going throughout uh, the year. So with that, I will close the presentation with my conclusion. Um, I've mentioned three key aspects of a reading group. One is the idea of hosting a reading group. It is to keep up to date with things in your field. You get each member of the group each week or every second week to present a, an interesting paper that they're reading and you learn like uh, you learn at the same time. Uh, next, we touched on some points for running a successful reading group. And finally, we touched on maybe the main point, the key ingredient for success for running a reading group. And that is to get people engaged from the beginning of the meeting by asking each person to give two questions um, concerning the paper or papers that are being published. Um, so with that, uh, I will uh, leave my references here, um, which is the paper by Kathy Wu that I mentioned. Uh, it's a great paper, so please do read it. Um, and with that, I thank you for your time. And if you are interested in the rest of the videos or more uh, interesting topics on quant finances, I would highly recommend you check out our YouTube channel. Um, thanks for your time.